Welcome to Understanding Wildfire with Professor Monks. Today's topic, the Wildland Urban Interface. In a previous video, we mentioned the Wildland Urban Interface, or WUI. The WUI has come to dominate discussions of fire and fire policy in the United States, so it's important to take a deeper look at it. The Forest Service defines the WUI as the area where houses meet or intermingle with undeveloped wildland vegetation. In other words, you have things people value right next to vegetation that might burn and threaten them. The U.S. government has specific definitions based on housing densities and percentages of tree cover, but we won't worry about those specifics here. We sometimes distinguish three types of WUI. First, we have the interface properly speaking. This is where you have a kind of borderline with housing on one side and wildland vegetation on the other. Then there's the intermix, which is where more isolated housing units are scattered within the wildland vegetation. And finally, there is the occluded interface, which occurs when small patches of wildland vegetation exist in an area that's largely developed. The WUI has been growing over the last half century due to changes in how Americans, as well as people in other highly industrialized countries, live their lives. In the past, most urban areas were separated from wildland vegetation by a ring of farmland. That's because the food for those urban areas had to be grown locally so that it could be transported to people cost-effectively. If you've ever wondered why New Jersey is known as the Garden State, it's because in the past, gardens in New Jersey were what supplied the people of New York City with fresh vegetables. This ring of farmland protects the urban areas from fire. A major wildfire will drop in intensity pretty quickly if all it has to burn is well-watered strawberry fields. A protective ring of farmland like this still surrounds settlements in many parts of the world. For example, when I traveled to Yunnan province in southern China, fire officials told me that they never worried about forest fires burning down residents' houses because fires wouldn't easily cross the fields that separated the forests from the villages. They did, however, worry that villagers using fire to clear stubble from their fields could start a fire that spread to the forest. So why have we lost that ring of farmland that separates urban and wildland areas? One big development was the invention of refrigerated transportation for food. Now New Yorkers can get their strawberries from California, where the climate makes it easier and cheaper to grow giant plantations of them, rather than having to rely on New Jersey. During the winter, they can even have their strawberries flown in from Chile, where it's summer. Once the land around a city is no longer profitable as farmland, it will either be sold to developers to build housing, or allowed to regrow into wildland vegetation. Second, we have the rise of the personal automobile and the construction of highways. Throughout history, cities have grown to the point where the average person's commute is about half an hour. Cars and highways enable people to live further out from the city and still get to work in the same amount of time. Third, a shift from a primarily industrial economy to one based on the service sector meant that people no longer had to all commute to a central location anyway. Work could be done from a variety of locations. Fourth, the city has been increasingly associated with a variety of social problems. For some people, the high price of housing in urban areas has forced them to move further out in order to afford a place to live. For others, their move was driven by fears of crime and violence in the city. These fears sometimes had a racist element to them, with white people assuming that predominantly black neighborhoods were more dangerous, creating a phenomenon known as white flight. Finally, people have put an increasing premium on what are known as environmental amenities. An environmental amenity is the positive value someone gets from being surrounded by natural beauty. People are willing to pay more for a house nestled among the trees or with a beautiful view of some mountains. In Australia, people motivated by environmental amenities are known as sea changers and tree changers because they seek out a change of lifestyle by moving to a place closer to the sea or to a lot of trees. You'll notice that one factor I didn't mention was population growth. Certainly, there has been major population growth in some areas of the country, such as the South and Southwest, that has been accompanied by massive growth of the WUI. But we see WUI growth happening, for the reasons listed above, even around cities like Pittsburgh or Buffalo that have had slow or even negative population growth during the last half century. People are spreading out, even if there aren't more of them in total. The WUI creates a number of challenges for fire management. Most obviously, it puts an increasing number of people and their property in harm's way. There's more to lose if a big destructive fire gets going. 
and if a firefighting strategy like a backburn goes wrong, it poses a higher risk in the Wui than in a wilderness area. Second, it's harder to protect homes that are scattered throughout a wildland area rather than clustered together. The best places to create a fire line might leave some homes on the wrong side. Third, having people in an area affected by a fire complicates firefighter operations. Firefighters have to deal with residents' cars on the road as they evacuate and as they try to return to check on their homes. Evacuees are bored and nervous and demand frequent answers and updates from fire services. Fourth, fire risk reduction activities can generate opposition from Wui residents. If a prescribed fire is conducted, for example, the smoke can cause air quality problems for neighbors, not to mention people panicking because they don't realize the fire is under control. And finally, Wui residents are often newcomers to the area, which means they lack traditional knowledge about fire. For example, the Wui is rapidly expanding in the Pine Barrens region of New Jersey, which is an extremely fire-prone ecosystem, as people from New York look to get out of the big city. While lifelong pineys are well-versed in how to handle forest fires, these newcomers are used to an urban environment. It takes a lot of work for the New Jersey Forest Fire Service to reach out to them and help them understand the risks and how they can protect themselves.